In chapter 67, Slank and Little Richard finally have the trunk. All they need is one more blow to the padlock to open it up. But before Slank knew it, he received a blow to the head from a wooden club held by Black Stash. In a minute, Black Stash's men had Little Richard and Slank tied up on the beach, arms and legs firmly bound behind their backs. They were left for the tide to take them out as Stash and his men took the trunk to their boat. However, they did not see the four fast-moving bees on the surface of the silver water heading straight for the longboat. Slank, noticing a small pile of star stuff having fallen out of the trunk onto the sand, rolled over in order for the star stuff to break the rope around his hands. Once free, he loosened little Richard's tightly bound hands. They set out along the beach in the direction of the water. The mermaids, having had some experience, knew how to attack the longboat. They struck the side in perfect unison, very nearly capsizing it and throwing two of Stash's men overboard. At that moment, Stash and Smee knew it was the mermaid. In that instant, they were struck again by the mermaids and all thrown overboard. The trunk drifted back to the shore. Molly saw everything and knew this was the time to show that she was a star catcher, or that she wasn't. With the help of Tubby Ted, Alf, and James, they went after Slank and Little Richard, who had once again spotted the trunk. They began throwing coconuts at the men, but the men were too strong. Before they knew it, Alf and the boys were turned face down into the sand, and Slank had a knife to Molly's neck. Slank told Molly that he was an other, and working for King Zarboff all along. His plan was to take the star stuff to run Dune, but Stash, Molly, and her father had unexpectedly gotten in the way. Just then, Peter shouted from a distance, with one foot on the trunk and one on the rock. Peter and Slank bargained that Slank could have the trunk if he let Molly free. They agreed to it, but Slank requested that Molly ride with him in the longboat to protect him from the mermaids. Once she was offshore with him, he let her know it was all a lie. He wouldn't be setting her free. In the meantime, Black Stash and his men swam to shore. Once they realized the treasure was gone, they set off to find who took it. Slank told Molly that his plan was to command the world and kill off all the star catchers. Molly continued to go along with the conversation to distract Slank because she could see Peter flying in the distance to come save her. Peter swooped down and began to fight Slank. He reached for Molly, but she fell off the longboat instead. She sank further and further down into the water. She then realized that Peter was saving her by pulling her up. Molly and Peter resurfaced into the air, now veteran flyers. As they hovered over the longo longboat, Slank threatened their lives. Slate decided he could take no more chances. The trunk was still there, and he would use the star stuff now. He pried open the trunk and realized it was empty. At that moment, Peter waved goodbye, and the mermaids took Slank and Little Richard out to sea forever. Peter and Molly flew back to shore, and Peter explained that he saved the star stuff by hiding it. Molly told Peter the amount of star stuff could have killed him, but Peter explained that he did not touch it, directly because it was in a metal box. It was now being guarded by the other mermaids in the lagoon. Once Molly saw the box, she realized it was now in her possession, but she did not know what to do with it. She felt tired and cold and had no match for the crushing burden of the responsibility for solving a problem far beyond her star catcher training. She wanted to cry, but at that moment heard a familiar voice, the voice of her father. Her father was also concerned that Peter touched the golden box. Molly's father explained that Peter should no longer be able to fly since he hadn't used the star stuff in a while. But just as the star stuff had changed the fish, it had changed Peter forever. He was now able to fly. Molly's father told Peter that there are only a few cases like this that has, have survived the exposure, and each one is unique, but it was possible that he wouldn't get any older. Molly's father invited Peter to come back to London with them, but before Peter could answer, they were faced with the crowd of the Mollusk tribe, as well as Black Stash and his men. Everyone wanted the trunk. A battle began. Several things then happened. The first thing was that Peter caught a thought from one of the mermaids, which was that there was a danger in the lagoon. The second was that the pirates abandoned the longboat and were sprinting toward the beach. The third was that the mollusk warriors started after the pirates, only to stop suddenly when they saw Mr. Grin the crocodile. The fourth was that Smee wrapped his shirt around his captain's bleeding stump and managed to drag him out of the longboat toward the shore. The fifth was that Peter flew up the beach to grab Leonard Astor's locket and flew back to the longboat to save Fighting Prawn. As Stash and Smee reached the shore, Stash looked down and noticed his hand having been cut off in the battle, floating around in the water. Smee did not move as quickly as Mr. Grin. 
Mr. Grin swallowed it in one gulp.